Welcome everyone. Today, I'm going to give you a quick tip regarding the chapter 1 of our book Bible 101, the story of Antioch Church. And I will discuss the main goal of this lesson. Let me read our main scripture passage first. Acts chapter 13. Now in the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manaen, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. We probably know well about other churches' names such as Corinthians, Ephesians, and Galatians, and some letters in the New Testament. Then what is Antioch Church? And why is it so important? And why do we begin our study with this church? I can say the Antioch Church is the most important church in the New Testament and play the most significant role in the early church age. But unfortunately, it has been underestimated because there were not many descriptions and stories about this church. However, the implication is so important. Let's take a look at it. Why Antioch Church? Then look at Antioch on this map. Where is it? As we know, Jesus lived in Judea and Israel, and once in a while, traveled to Samaria, but mainly Jesus traveled from Galilee to Jerusalem. Then look at the map again. Where is Antioch? It is far up there. There is no clue to know why the church in Antioch is important. As you can guess, the context and the environment of this city Antioch was radically different compared to the city of Jerusalem this city was another metropolitan city, much larger and much powerful, that was also dedicated to the king, Syrian king Antiochus. And it was the main city in the Mediterranean territory. So they used a different language, Koine Greek, and thought differently, believed in different gods, different religions, and lived in different ways. Here are critical implications hidden in our passage. First, Antioch Church was a small house church. I will deeply dive into the setting of the early churches in chapter 3. Antioch Church was very small and did not own a building. And they did not have the Bible, no hymnals, no songs, no doctrines, and no other church buildings and no rules. What they did was to share the witness of Jesus and his stories delivered by the teachers. They just prayed and fasted. Probably sharing food and agape dinner was the only thing that they constantly practiced. Their religious life was simple. They tried to listen to the Holy Spirit and sent out missionaries to share the good news. With limited resources, they truly listened to the Holy Spirit simply follow the Christ. Second, this church's setting was strange. Let me give you a bit of historical background. The beginning story was like this. In Jerusalem, when the group of people began following the teachings of Jesus, two different groups were formed in Jerusalem. I will bring you more detail in other chapters, but the bottom line was that two Christian groups existed. Jewish Christians who belonged to Jewish communities, so they respected Jewish culture and spoke Hebrew and Aramaic, and Gentile Christians with non-Jewish cultural background, for example, Jewish immigrants who traveled to this city or temporarily stayed there, and other Hellenist resident aliens who lived in Jerusalem they became Christians too. However, it created huge conflict 
because Hellenist Christians did not need to respect Jewish culture nor religious rules anymore after they had converted to follow Christ. So ordinary Jews were upset with the Gentile Christians, not Jewish Christians. They persecuted the Gentile Christians. So the Hellenists had to escape from Jerusalem. But Jewish Christians were okay to stay there in Jerusalem. This is why they began delivering their faith in other Gentile cities like the city of Antioch. So for this reason, the church in Antioch was very diverse. Look at our verse today. Barnabas, who was sent from Jerusalem to take care of the Antioch church, he was a traditional Jew. And Simeon was called Niger. It was not the name of color. So we guessed that this man was from Africa and had an African heritage. Lucius from Cyrene was a typical Roman name with Roman, Roman cultural background. Manan was a royal family member. People with different cultural background gathered for just one name, Jesus. Then here people began calling them Christians, Christ's followers. This is the origin of the name Christian. This first Christian church was simple, mission-oriented, and powerfully diverse which required radical welcoming. And the first Christians gathered with one simple confession. They confessed, Jesus is the Lord. Here are our main lessons and goal through Antioch Church and the story of the first Christians. They formed a new diverse community. They did not pay attention to Jewish rules and tradition anymore. While Jewish Christians in Jerusalem were still bound by Jewish tradition, Gentile Hellenist Christians could see the most important value very clearly. Their motto was very simple. Anyone become Christians. It was a groundbreaking statement. However, it does not mean that it became so easy and convenient. Rather, it became really hard because you can become a Christian only when you clearly confess your faith. In other words, without your faith, you cannot be a Christian. You cannot imitate. You cannot pretend. Your family background cannot make you a Christian. And visiting a worship service cannot make you a Christian unless you truly worship. You have to confess that Christ is the Lord. It is interesting to see what happened during the persecution period in the first century. People threatened the Christians and asked, Are you a Christian? Do you confess Jesus is the Lord? Then what would you answer if you were in this situation? You can say no, but the first Christians did not hide their faith. They knew this when they said, Christ is my Lord and I believe in Christ. They would suffer and die, but they did not deny their faith and their confession. This is one thing that they never gave up. This lesson from the first Christian church is this. Who are Christians? How do you define this identity? According to our story today, we can say, Christians are those who confess this. I have faith in Christ. Jesus is my Savior. So whoever confessed the name of the Lord as their Savior, they can become Christians and they make radically hospitable group. Faith in Christ and welcoming anyone. This is the only condition that can make people Christian. If you have any questions regarding this lesson, contact Pastor Stephen by email pastorstephencho at gmail.com. See you next time.